Welcome everyone to the very first Photo Biz Biz Talk. I'm Andy from the marketing department and the host of the Photo Biz Live webinar series. Today we're going to introduce you to our new video format, which are the Biz Talks. These are going to be short videos where we cover business topics and give you ways to act on these topics right away, as soon as you're done watching the video. Now, we would love to, for you to participate in these video series by giving us ideas and topics that you want to know about and you want to know how to act on. Below the video, there's going to be a link to an email address. If you have an idea, be sure to send it along to us. If we pick your idea, we're going to acknowledge that you're the one that submitted the idea and create a link to, the, to your website in the text of the video below. So be sure to send us your ideas because we want to know what you want to know. All right, today's first topic, or rather today's topic, is going to be a five minute SEO checklist. Now you'll notice the asterisk because if there are things on this list that you're not doing, it's obviously going to take you a little bit more than five minutes, but the check should take about five minutes. Today we're going to discuss three topics. We're going to look at your website, we're going to look at your social media, and then we're going to look at how your business appears on the rest of the web. So let's launch right into it with the website. All right, the very first thing we're going to talk about today is your metadata. Now the metadata is the backbone of your website. It's what you tell Google your site is all about. Now you may be very familiar with the global area. That's the metadata that describes your entire website. But you may not have known that every page on your photo biz site has a space for metadata. And this is very important because it shows Google that your website is more than just a single page about a single topic. It lets the crawlers know that you have a deep website that covers a lot of topics and you know what you're talking about. All right, the second thing we're going to look at is contact information. Now, this is something that gets overlooked a lot, but on the contact form of your page, you always want to make sure that you have an email address and a phone number where you can be reached. Not everybody likes to use the contact form or they have a very specific question. The other thing you want to do is let them know when they can contact you. If you list a phone number, list hours they can call. If you have a studio, let people know whether or not they can drop by or whether you're by appointment only. When you list your email address, let them know how long they should be waiting before they expect to hear back from you. As soon as you get the email, within a business day, let them know and that way they have more confidence in reaching out to you because they know when they can hear back from you. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is text. Now, here's a big thing that a lot of photographers miss, is that while the images on your website are what sell your business to the visitor, the text on your website is what lets Google know that you are a trustworthy company and that you know what you're doing. So, every information page or page that will have text on it should have at least two to three paragraphs of text. Now, if you find yourself with a page that says, for more information, please contact us, you should really consider having a frequently asked questions page. One, this gives more text for Google to read on your website. And two, it establishes that you, as a business owner, know what you're talking about when it comes to your business. You've had these questions before, and you have the answers readily available. Okay, second thing today is social media. Now. Everybody knows social media is huge. You have Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, but there are, you really want to make sure that you have profiles and pages for your business. Now, there are a wide variety of areas you can choose, but there are two that you really need to have. That's going to be a Facebook business page and a Google Plus local business page. You need a Facebook page because it's expected at this point. If someone goes to Facebook, they want to be able to find your business. Now, a Google Plus local page is something that's not everyone knows about, but what it involves is getting yourself on a Google local search result, which is that map that you see when you search for a local business. The Google Plus local page lets Google verify your address as a business, and that puts you in the running to be listed on the map. If Google doesn't verify your address, you don't show up on the map. Okay, under social media, I've listed blogging because it is a social activity. Now, blogging will really help your SEO if 
you're constantly updating it. Now, I don't mean constantly every day. I mean once, twice, maybe three or four times a month, especially if you're busy and you have the content. Now, there's a lot of great blogs out there. We have our own blog. I strongly recommend it. It does everything you want it to do, and you're already familiar with the control panel. Okay, then the third thing today is going to be the engagement. Now, engagement simply refers to how often people interact with what you post on social media. For a blog, this is going to be when they like your blog on Facebook, when they share it, when they leave comments. Uh, also counts for emailing the link to your blog. This is really good if they've got family in far places. You put up a preview of their session, you let them email it to their friends and family. On, on other social media sites, for say Google+, this is going to be the plus ones, Facebook likes, shares, and comments. You really want to encourage your clients to interact with your page on Facebook. This is going to help your rankings and it's going to help your reach on Facebook, which is a wonderful free marketing tool. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at for social media is updates. Are you updating your pages enough? Now. Obviously, if you're active on Facebook, it's better, but you want to make sure that you're posting at minimum once a week on Facebook and twice a month to your blog. Now, this both helps to ensure that you maintain a level of engagement, which is a metric that both Google and Facebook use, and it lets people know that you are still in business and you are consistently doing work. Uh, there's nothing worse than coming to a blog that hasn't had a post in six months because then you have to ask yourself, is this business still in business? And that's not a, that's not a question we want potential customers asking. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at today is your presence on the web. And this is everything that is not necessarily under your control. The first thing are the listings. Now, in, in ye olden days, there were the yellow pages and that's how you found people. Well, since we've moved on to the internet, there are a lot of places you can find this information. But what we want to make sure is that you have a consistent listing no matter what website it's on. That's the name of your business, the address of your business, and the phone number of your business. And Google does count this when they're considering how well you rank, how consistently you're listed online. Now, to help you with your listings, there are three resources we recommend. The first is a website called getlisted.org. Uh, it's by a company called Moz. They're really big into the SEO industry. And what it will do is it's going to search online for your business. It's going to look for profiles on sites like Foursquare, Yelp, obviously the social media. And it's going to tell you what it's found and what it hasn't found. Now where it really will help you is it recommends how to improve your presence. Okay, now the second one is we're going to look at is UBL, and that's the Universal Business Listing. Now this is a paid service, but they do have a basic level service that's very affordable. Uh, the Canadian version is about $50 Canadian per year. The U.S. is relatively close to that. So it's not a huge investment, but it does pay returns. And what UBL does is it takes the information you provide and sends it out to their network of listing websites. They also provide you with the metrics from these sites so you can see what's working and what's not. All right, the last one we're going to talk about today is whitespark.ca. Now, Whitespark is a citation listing website. You provide a geographic area and a keyword, and it runs an automated search and then finds where the top ranking sites get their citations from. Now, even though it's a Canadian website, it is not restricted to Canadians only. Now what we're going to do to make this easier for you is we're going to have a link to each of these three websites below the video. So if you'd like to check them out, just check the links. Okay, speaking of linking. Now the way Google determines how trustworthy your website is, is by grading the sites that link to you. Now you want to make sure you are generating as many useful links as you can. Now a useful link is a link that comes from a website that is trustworthy and above board and is related to you. If you're a photographer in the Midwest and you have links from scuba diving companies in Florida, that's not necessarily a good link because they're so far from one another. However, if you're a wedding photographer in Vancouver 
and you link to limousine services, which also link back to you, you're providing a useful link that your visitor is going to want to use. So you want to make sure that you have these links. Now to find out who links to you, you can use Google's Webmaster Tools. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at today are the reviews for your website online. Now these can be Google Plus reviews, these can be Yelp reviews, any website that lets someone rate your business will get counted by Google. Now it won't necessarily be used, but it will be counted. So you want to encourage your customers to leave your reviews. And the best way to do this is to make it very easy for them. When you send out a receipt or a thank you email after a session, be sure to include a link that will have them, that gives them the ability to leave you a review within one or two clicks. Now, this is one of the key things to remember with reviews. Getting a positive review directly relates to how easy it is for someone to leave that review for you. So link to your Facebook page, which now allows reviews. Link to your Google Plus page, which again allows reviews. Or your Yelp page, if you're active there. Now, if you're looking at this and you say, well, nobody's reviewed my website, what do I do? Take it slow. Most websites that list reviews discount reviews that come in very quickly, especially if they're positive, because they, at that point, they assume that you have paid people to review your website rather than your customers naturally leaving reviews. All right, so that's what we looked at today. Just make sure you take a, take a run through the list, review your website, take a look at the resources. If you do have any questions, be sure to give our passionate support team a call. And once again, if you have ideas or topics you'd like to see us cover, and this can be anything about your business. It can be online, it can be organizational, it can be you know numbers related. Send us those emails, let us know. We want to help you. Have a great day, everybody.